There are two surahs in the Quran that start with this set of letters. Exactly the same letters. Alif, Lam, and Mim. And yet we pronounce these three letters completely differently in each surah. So in Surah Al-Baqarah we say Alif, Lam, And in Surah Al-Sharh, we say, Alam nashrah laka sadarak. This shows that the Quran is an audio book, and it was passed down to us orally. So passing down a difference like this properly would have never been possible if the Quran was just a book written on paper, considering that people at the time of the revelation did not use such signs on top of the letters to know which is which. So if something in the Qur'an was to be pronounced differently from what you would expect, you would then know that this is exactly how it was revealed to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and this is how it was passed down to us. For that reason, there is a single word in the Qur'an, specifically in Surah Hud, that does not follow the regular pronunciation rules of similar words. And it has its own special pronunciation because it was passed down to us exactly like this. That's why when reading this ayah, you will directly see that there is a little sign under that word, referring to the fact that you are supposed to do something differently here, particularly you are supposed to read this word using imala. And that is the only place you're going to apply imala here, if you're reciting hafs an asim. But what is imala? And what should it sound like? Well, simply put, imala is a sound of a state between alif and ya. And to completely understand it and to pronounce it properly, you need to understand the mechanism of pronouncing alif and ya. And then anything that comes in between will be easy to grasp, insha'Allah. So let's start with the alif. As for the alif, it is an easy sound to produce since it exists in every single language. A, a, just make sure that the opening of the mouth is an average opening. Uh, not too narrow. Uh, or too wide. Uh. Importantly, the tongue is completely relaxed and doing absolutely nothing in that case. Remember, this is very crucial. Let's have a look at this example to see it used in practice. So, a. Now, as for the ya. The opening is a little bit narrower, but what is important here is the position of the tongue. The middle of the tongue is raised, almost all the way to the hard palate, but without touching it. E, e. This is how we produce the E sound in Arabic, and this is how it sounds in practice. So to produce the proper ya, the middle of the tongue has to be raised closer to the hard palate. Now, imale is all about the state of the tongue and to produce it properly, your tongue will be between the two positions of a and e so your tongue will be lower than the raised tongue of the ya that we just talked about but higher than the relaxed flat tongue of the alif which we talked about at the beginning 
So it has to be in between the ya and the alif. So how high or how low should your tongue be? Well, there are two variations of imela. First, imela kubra, or in English, major imela, and imela sughra, or minor imela. And in order to visualize them easily and to understand them, we're going to use this graph. Alif, which represents the absolute fatha, will be on the left, and ya, which represents the absolute kasra, on the right. Imala sughra will be closer to the alif, which means you will slightly raise your tongue, and it should sound like this. Uh, uh. This type of imala is not used in hafs an alsim recitation. So, if you don't get it right, you should not be worried too much because you will not need it when you recite the Qur'an using Hafs an Asim. It is used more often in other sort of Qira'at, like the Qira'a of Warsh an Nafi'a, like in this example. وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُ زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا So here we said الدُّنْيَا Not الدُّنْيَا So there is a difference between a and a now, moving to imala kubra, which will be closer to the ya, which means that you will raise your tongue even higher, but not completely up to the position of the ya. And this is how it should sound like. Eh, eh. And this sound is found in the Quran when reciting hafs an asim in one single position which is, as we said before, in Surah Hud. And this is how you should pronounce it. وَقَالَ ارْكَبُوا فِيهَا بِسْمِ اللَّهِ مَجْرِهَا وَمُرْسَاهَا Notice that we said مَجْرِهَا Not مَجْرَاهَا that is an alif, so it is not correct. And I did not say Majariha because that would then be a ya. Yeah. So it is not a or e. It is a. وَقَالَ ارْكَبُوا فِيهَا بِسْمِ اللَّهِ مَجْرِهَا وَمُرْسَاهَا now, in other qira'at, this type of imala is used much more often, and mushafs that are made for a certain type of qira'a, like for example the qira'a of al-duri an al will have the two dots of the ya written under it to indicate that this word could be pronounced using imala in this position, and which is exactly what we see in Surat al-Shams. وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاهَا And if you want to learn more about Qira'at and the differences between them and why they exist, then I highly recommend watching this lesson. It is quite important. So in short, Imala is a sound that comes from between the alif and the ya. Imala sughra is closer to alif, in which you will raise the middle of the tongue a little bit higher than when you pronounce the alif, while imala kubra will be closer to the ya, so you will raise the middle of the tongue even higher than in imala sughra in order to produce the sound properly. And for the hafs an asim reciter, you will only need to apply imala kubra, which is easier to apply anyway. And it is indeed needed in one single position in the Qur'an. 
The other type of imela might be harder to master, but you should not be worried about it since it is not used in hafs an asim qira'ah and it is used in other qira'at. Thanks for watching. I hope you have learned something new today. If you did, please like and share the video for other people to learn from it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.